This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It's 5 o'clock here on your Friday morning. Good morning to you. I'm Nicole Griffin. Here's what's making headlines on this May 29th. This could have happened to anybody, anywhere, because someone was senselessly out drinking and driving and speeding. Two people are now facing charges after three teens were hit and killed over the weekend. We are learning more about the crash and how the victims' mothers are reacting to this tragedy. A local organization is stepping up to stop the cycle of violence, what the program is doing to give young men help and support. And this weekend will be another good one for boating. Working for you, the safety rules police officers say you should know before going out on the water. Thanks for starting your Friday morning with us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Nicole Griffin, meteorologist Todd Klassen standing by. Todd, you have some good news for our weekend, but you're saying we're going to have to get through a little bit of rain throughout the day today first. Yeah, there'll be a little bit of rain at least through the noon hour for most of the state, maybe a little bit longer off towards the east. But once we get past that, Nicole, it's going to be an absolutely spectacular evening tonight. And then we're going to carry that over into your weekend as well. So today's just one of those days that you need to grab a little bit of everything before you get going. You'll need the sunglasses at times this morning and then especially later on this afternoon. You'll need the umbrella at times here this morning. And don't forget the sunscreen and water even once we start to see uh, these cooler temperatures come in and the lower humidity. You have to remember the sun still getting very, very strong this time of year as we push towards uh, the first day of summer here uh, next month. Already a couple downpours out there right now stretching from near Lebanon down towards the Bainbridge area and then we'll slide a little further off towards the southwest and there's an isolated downpour working its way towards Greencastle right in between Greencastle and Brazil. Part of the cold front that is still in Illinois. This will start to head in our direction throughout the day today. So as we work our way throughout the morning hours, our rain chances will increase. And we'll deal with rain chances, I think, through about the 1 and 2 o'clock hour. And then once that happens, plenty of sunshine turns into a beautiful afternoon and evening for us. As so do not cancel any plans you do have tonight, maybe dining outdoors. Uh, because of the rain chances, they're all here during the first half of the day. Nicole. All right, Todd, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. We are keeping an eye on your morning commute for you. This is I-70 at County Road 700 West. Coming in from Hancock County, good morning to everyone in this area. We have no delays to report. You can see traffic is starting to pick up at this hour. New overnight, police are searching for answers after a possible hit and run crash left one person dead on the city's southwest side. Around midnight, midnight, officers were called to a person down on West Mills Road near Kellum Drive. When they arrived, they found the victim laying in the street. A witness told officers she saw a vehicle hit the body and leave. But police say it is unclear if the body was already lying there. This morning, the families of three teenagers killed in a hit and run are getting answers. It comes as police arrest two people detectives believe are responsible for that crash. Our Alyssa Donovan is live this morning with details on this tragic accident. Alyssa, good morning. Good morning, Nicole. IMPD Police Chief Randall Taylor announced the arrest of two people yesterday in, in relation to that hit and run crash that killed three teens that happened last weekend. And he also said that that hit and run crash, those two drivers were both intoxicated and driving way too fast for the area. We know that police arrested 49-year-old Okamita Link and 24-year-old Shantiana Willis. Both were driving down Kessler Boulevard at speeds well above the limit for the area. One driver driving at 73 miles per hour. The other driver was at 91 miles per hour, causing a three car crash that killed three teenagers who were walking alongside the road last weekend. Police say both drivers were under the influence. Those three teenagers, 15 year old Kiara Brown, 14 year old David Evans, and 13 year old Tiana Velez. Their mother speaking out at a press conference on Thursday. Three young people are gone right now. They should still be here. All three of these kids are angels. They're all heroes, every last one of them. My son was walking with our daughter. He tried to get her out the way. He wasn't able to. He wasn't able to save her. 
Witnesses told police the drivers appear to be racing down Kessler Boulevard as it narrows from two lanes to one. And according to court documents, those two drivers are related father and daughter. They face several felonies together, including reckless homicide, as well as operating a vehicle while intoxicated. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. Indianapolis has seen an increase in deadly violence so far this year. IMPD has investigated 68 criminal homicides since January 1st. There were 43 criminal homicides at this time last year. One organization is reaching out to young people to help prevent them from resorting to violence. Before You Fall is taking that mission to another level by creating a home for boys. The building at the corner of 30th and Tibbs will house young men ages 14 to 24 in need of a supportive environment. It has six bedrooms and can, and can give up to 12 a place to stay and get to the root cause of what's causing them to act violently. I don't think that I can ever tell a young man to put his gun down. But what I can do is put something in his life, like finances, a uh, purpose that will enable him to have a desire to not want to kill people. The young men are able to stay for 90 days in the home. It's completely free of charge to them and their families. You can find more about Before You Fall on our website, theindychannel.com. Now to the latest on the toll the COVID-19 pandemic is taking on Hoosier lives. Indiana now has recorded more than 1,900 deaths in the state. the state. The state reported 37 new deaths between April 29th and this past Wednesday. 646 new positive cases were also confirmed, bringing the total to more than 33,000. 242,000 people have been tested for COVID-19 in the state. Just under 14% have tested positive. Many county fairs are figuring out new ways to hold events this year. In Johnson County, the board decided their fair will be for 4-H participants only and not open to the public. It will be held from July 19th to the 25th. 4-H participants will be able to show off their projects and livestock. Shows will also be broadcast over social media. The Queen Contest will continue as planned with social distancing rules and restrictions. However, the annual parade through downtown Franklin has been canceled. Neighboring counties like Bartholomew and Morgan have also taken similar steps. And it is set to be another nice weekend here in central Indiana. And that means people will likely be hitting the water. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us this morning with boating safety advice from the Fishers Police Department. So you and your family can have a safe weekend. Kelsey. Good morning. Everyone is probably itching to get out on the water this weekend after several days of rain and safety officials want to make sure that you're staying safe while you're out there. According to the DNR, there are several violations they see most often out on the lake. The first is boaters not having enough life jackets on board for each person on the boat. Another Indiana law they see broken is if you're doing any water sports, there needs to be someone else on board acting as a spotter besides the driver. And most importantly, don't drive a boat while intoxicated. In a blink of an eye, things change. Maybe not through a fault of yours, but maybe the fault of somebody else's. So it's really important that we're always aware of what's going on, we're always being defensive in our actions, and that we take precautions to make sure that our own actions don't get us into trouble. And during this pandemic, they are encouraging people to wear their masks while on the boat, but obviously not while you're in the water. I'm Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. All right, good advice. Thank you, Kelsey. The state has not announced guidelines when it comes to K through 12 students returning to class in the fall, but many school corporations are preparing, including IPS. Starting next week, the district will send out a survey to parents. Officials want to know what families expect and want before sending their children back to classrooms. Superintendent Alicia Johnson says the district also wants feedback on the e-learning experience. What went well? What did we do well? What do we need to work on? So as we're planning for next year, we have that feedback uh, and we can grow in the places where we didn't do as well. IPS still owns former school buildings that are closed. The district could reuse those buildings again if necessary to help with social distancing. It's 5.09. Let's check in again with Todd. Good morning. 
Hey, Nicole, good morning to you. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. The weekend shaping up to be a good one. We just have to get through a little bit of rain here this morning before we get into that cooler, less humid air mass that will be in place starting this afternoon. So as you get out the door this morning, I would have the umbrella handy as we're starting to see more isolated showers and a few downpours develop across the area. Temperatures are currently uh, in the 60s. Everything right now, though, is very, very spotty. As you see, there's some showers near Bloomington, a few more downpours with a little broken line from Lebanon back towards uh, the Greencastle area. But the cold front is still off to our west in Illinois. So until that passes, we will have to keep rain in the forecast. I think it's fully through the state by about 3 p.m. And so obviously the western locations, you're probably done with the rain threat uh, by the noon hour. And that's why your temperatures are a little bit warmer where the front lingers just a little bit longer off to the east, just slightly cooler by a degree or two. Overall, it turns into a very nice afternoon and evening. Evening. We'll talk about that and look ahead to the weekend in a further detail coming up in just a little bit, Nicole. All right, Todd, thank you. Another night of violent protests across the country in response to the death of George Floyd. Straight ahead, the response from the Minneapolis mayor overnight. During the pandemic, Walgreens is focusing on helping others with their mental health. Still ahead, how their pharmacists are being trained to identify signs of depression and addiction. And here's a live look outside at 5:11 on this Friday morning. This is I-70 at the I-65 North split. Everything seems to be moving up to speed. We are keeping an eye on traffic as you head out the door. Stay with us. Good morning, Indiana. We'll be right back. 2020 tonight at 9 8 Central on ABC. Welcome back in Kentucky. Protesters marched in Louisville Thursday night over the deadly shooting of a woman in her own home. Hundreds came out to support Breonna Taylor and her family. The 26-year-old ER tech was shot to death when police served a no-knock search warrant on her home back in March. What started as a peaceful protest after a town hall to discuss the case escalated as the night drew on. The crowd was tear gassed and glass storefronts were shattered. Police say at least seven people were shot critically. The protests in Louisville unfolded as other cities saw similar demonstrations over police killings of black Americans. And this was the scene across the country as thousands took to the streets once again to protest the death of George Floyd. Massive protests breaking out in New York, Ohio, and again in Minnesota. In Minneapolis, the third police precinct was seen burning as protesters forced their way into the building and set the fire. Earlier in the day, staff at the precinct were evacuated for their protection. And just hours ago, Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Frey giving a press conference. Frey condemned the act of violence also declaring a local emergency. He along with several peaceful protesters calling for a stop to the violence. If you out here and you standing for George, then we have to stand for what he stood for, okay. which was being peaceful. More than 500 soldiers from the Minnesota National Guard have been sent to St. Paul, Minneapolis, and surrounding communities to restore peace. President Trump also weighing in on the controversy overnight in a tweet he called protesters in Minneapolis, quote, thugs who are dishonoring the memory of George Floyd. He also called Fry a very weak, radical left mayor. Fry responded by saying, quote, weakness is pointing a finger at somebody else during a time of crisis and that Donald Trump does doesn't quote know a thing about Minneapolis. As the coronavirus pandemic continues in the U.S., the federal government says it will continue paying National Guard members to help with relief efforts. In a tweet, President Trump says he is extending the funds until at least mid-August. It was originally set to expire on June 24th. The extension will keep Guard members under the direction of their governors with federal government money. The Pentagon says about 46,000 National Guard members are helping with the coronavirus outbreak. More than 300 workers at a Tyson meat processing plant in Texas have pe tested positive for COVID-19. That's about 20% of its employees. Tyson plants across the country have been hit hard by the virus, including in Logansport. The company says it requires those that tested positive to stay home until they meet criteria from the CDC. President Trump issued an executive order last month for, for plants to remain open during the pandemic. 
There's a new first responder on the lookout for anyone who may be experiencing mental health issues. Walgreens pharmacist just finished the first phase of mental health first aid training. The program was developed by National Council for Behavioral Health. They are taught to look for risk factors and red flags in patients, everything from anxiety and depression to addiction. Pharmacists can connect those people with the right resources, support groups, or may just lend an empathetic ear. It is 517. Let's get a check your Storm Team 6 forecast with Todd. We're expecting some rain this morning, but it's a nice weekend ahead, Todd. Yeah, you know, just a little bit of a rainfall here this morning, but the good news is it's out of here for any Friday evening plans that you may have, Nicole. And then the weekend looks absolutely terrific with a completely new air mass uh, that will be in place. Here's a live look at Storm Team 6 radar right now, and you can see a few of these isolated downpours starting to flare up across parts of the area. Uh, one near Greencastle, another one just south of Brazil, near Bloomington, a few light showers near Spencer as well. Then as we slide up to the north, a downpour or two in the Boone County area from Lebanon uh, back down uh, towards the Advance area right along State Road 75. And we'll see additional storms and downpours start to flare up here in the coming hours uh, for two reasons. One, the sun will be coming up and that's going to help to fuel a little bit of instability across the area as a cold front continues to work in our direction. And that cold front right now is just off to our west, really stretching from Chicago down towards the St. Louis area. But on the backside, of that cold front, you notice how quickly not only the precipitation comes to an end, but how quickly the clouds come to an end as the clearing lines already in western Illinois. And so that's what we are going to see here in central Indiana. We are first going to see the rain showers start to make their way into the area throughout the morning hours. Once we get into the afternoon, the front's still lingering on the eastern side of the state. So you're going to start to see some isolated downpours and maybe some gusty winds and a few isolated thunderstorms as this front pushes through. The further east you are, the better chance of thunderstorms later because of the daytime heating. Now the front should be through by three, four o'clock in most of the state. Could linger a little bit longer for those of you in Richmond, Seymour, and Greensburg, but it will set us up for a beautiful evening across the area. I know it's showing a few rain showers uh, moving through still by 8, 10 p.m. I really don't think that is going to happen. Temperatures are going to be in the 60s here this morning. It will be cooler today. We're not going to get up into the 80s. We're going to keep the temperatures in the 70s. A lot of this heating though will take place the second half of the day once we get into the sunshine. Temperatures won't really do a whole lot uh, here throughout the course of the morning hours. If you want to fire up the grill this evening and have dinner on the patio with the family or maybe go to a patio, uh, some of the businesses that are open, uh, I would suggest maybe bringing a jacket because once that sun sets, we're going to cool off into the 60s pretty quickly. And by the time you wake up tomorrow morning, we're going to be in a the 50s across the area. So it's a much cooler start to our day tomorrow. But there's that Saturday and Sunday with the sunshine, both days, the temperatures in the low 70s. Enjoy the lower humidity because it does look like it comes back, as well as the heat, Nicole, as we work our way into the middle half of next week. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's get a live look outside at one of our in-dot traffic cameras this morning. This is I-69 at 106th Street in Fishers. Good morning to everyone in that area. You can see not too many cars on the road at this hour. So if you're heading out the door, you shouldn't have anything to slow you down. Amazon is looking to keep most of its new workers that were hired as temps due to the surge in online shopping. The company says it is willing to offer full-time jobs to 125,000 people. That's out of the 175,000 that were hired. Amazon expects online shopping trends to continue and what seasonal workers to transition into permanent roles starting next week. This comes just after the Labor Department's report of 2 million additional unemployment claims. Costco members have something to look forward to, the return of free samples. The warehouse club stopped offering free samples of food items in March due to the coronavirus concerns. Costco's CFO says the popular free food is coming back mid-June. The company says it won't be exactly like the old way where members can pick up samples from a tray, but it is unclear what exactly they're doing to change that. Costco already requires everyone in its stores to wear masks. 
Archaeologists in Italy made a stunning ancient discovery this week. Take a look at this perfectly preserved Roman mosaic floor. It was found under a vineyard in northern Italy. Pictures of the floor show intricate patterns and colorful details. The discovery was made almost a century after remains of an ancient villa were found on the site. The town will now work to ensure the floor can be seen by the public. Through Though the class of 2020 can't hold a normal commencement ceremony, many high schools are still finding ways to celebrate. Coming up after the break, the special ceremony one Hamilton County High School held for its seniors. It's 522. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. Stay with us. It's at 530. As the school year comes to a close, high schools are finding ways to celebrate seniors for their graduation. In Hamilton County, Westfield High School held a drive-up commencement ceremony. Members of the class of 2020 rode through the parking lot, many in decorated cars and signs. Faculty members cheered as graduates were given diplomas through their car windows. The school also held an online commencement with student speeches. Good to see there and congratulations. And Todd, you're saying anyone who has outdoor plans this weekend they should be in pretty good shape you know tip top shape doesn't really get much better than this for the last weekend in may we're talking about low humidity comfortable temperatures which i think both of those things is what everybody wants after what has been a very warm and muggy stretch of weather for us uh, with these daily chance of storms now there are a few storms on storm team six radar here this morning uh, and we will have to deal with the potential of some rain in this forecast it looks like at least through about midday but once that front goes through and it's a cold front temperatures will rebound later on this afternoon back up into the 70s. In fact, where you get into the sunshine a little quicker here today in Lafayette, you could approach 80 degrees, about 75 here in the city, a little cooler to the east where the clouds. And unfortunately, the showers linger just a little bit longer for you in Richmond, but I would expect by five o'clock onward, everybody's done with the rain and that new air mass will work in. And we'll talk more about that air mass and the weekend coming up in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thank you. A study is being done right here in Indiana to learn more about the coronavirus. Straight ahead on Good Morning Indiana, why researchers need your help to understand immunity from COVID-19. It's 527. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Stay with us. Show today at 10 on RTV6. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. I think the speed limit down around that area is 35 or so. Um, you know, you're you're doubling that, almost getting to the point where you're tripling those kind of speeds. That's that's just that's irresponsible. Two people now behind bars after their alleged drag racing killed three teenagers. Now at 5:30, the punishment they could be facing and reaction from the victims' families. And a new study being done at IU could help unlock answers surrounding the coronavirus this morning, what researchers are hoping to learn. Thanks for starting your morning with us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Nicole Griffin. Happy Friday. Meteorologist Todd Klassen standing by now. Todd, you have some really good news for the weekend ahead. Yeah, you know, it's been a long week, I feel like, with the heat, the humidity. We've had these thunderstorms almost every day, these downpours, and it was kind of tough to plan things out, right, around these storms. Well, once we get to Saturday and Sunday, we are going to be in great shape. With that said, we still have to get the cold front through the area, and we do have some rain in the forecast for the day today, but it's mainly here just the first half of the day. Storm Team 6 radar shows a little shower near Lebanon, a couple more near the Bainbridge area, heavier downpour as you work your way towards Brazil. Brazil. And there's a few other showers trying to get going across the area. But off to our west, that's where the cold front lies. It stretches really from Chicago down through St. Louis right now. And that front, as it comes through, will produce a few showers and thunderstorms off and on through about the one o'clock hour for most of us. It could linger a little bit longer off towards the east. But soon as that front goes through, you'll notice the humidity drop right away. The temperatures will actually warm because we'll get into more in the way of sunshine.
So it turns into a beautiful Friday afternoon after what will be a little bit of a cooler and wetter start to the day. This weekend, Saturday and Sunday, both feature mostly sunny skies, no threat of rain. More on that weekend forecast in just a little bit, Nicole. All right, Todd, thank you so much. We are keeping an eye on your morning commute. This is I-465 in US 52 Brookville Road. You can see traffic is starting to pick up here in this area, but no crashes or delays to report. Let's take another look at an in-dot traffic camera this morning. This is I-70 at State Road 267. You can see there is some construction going on in this area. I-70 eastbound from Ronald Reagan Parkway to the south split is closed. That closure lasts until June 28th. So just a reminder this morning as you head out the door, plan an alternate route. New overnight, police are searching for answers in a deadly crash on the city's southwest side. Around midnight, officers were called to a person down on West Mills Road near Kellum Drive. When officers arrived there on the scene, they found the victim laying in the street. A witness told officers she saw a vehicle hit the body and leave. This morning, police are trying to figure out if the victim was already in the street. And also new this morning, a shooting on the city's northeast side sends two women to the hospital. A Metro police officer heard shots fired around 1030 Thursday night near 34th and Keystone. When an officer pulled a car over, they found the women inside that car with gunshot wounds. Police believe the shooting happened at a gas station in the area. And this morning, the women are listed in stable condition. We now know more information about a deadly crash killing three teenagers. The IMPD police chief says the drivers involved may have been racing and were driving more than double the speed limit. Two people were arrested in this case on Thursday and our Alyssa Donovan is live this morning with the very latest details. Alyssa. Good morning, Nicole. One of those drivers was going just over 71 miles per hour. The other driver hit 91 miles per hour. And this is in an area of Kessler Boulevard where the speed limit is about 35. So those drivers were going well over the speed limit when this three car collision happened. Police arrested 24 year old Shantiana Willis and her father, 49 year old Okamita Link for the hit and run crash that happened over the weekend. According to witnesses, the two appeared to be racing down Kessler Boulevard when they struck and killed three teenagers, 15-year-old Kiara Brown, 14-year-old David Evans, and 13-year-old Tiana Velez. They were walking by the side of the road. Both drivers reported to be under the influence at the time of the crash. Wild on the streets, it could have happened to it, this, could have happened to anybody, anywhere, mm -hmm. because someone was senselessly out drinking and driving and speeding. And unfortunately, it just happened to be our three children that were out there. And that crash happened right around 1.30 in the morning on Saturday. The two drivers faced several felony charges, including reckless homicide, as well as driving under the influence. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. Now to the very latest on the coronavirus outbreak and its impact on families across our state. On Thursday, the state health department confirmed 646 new COVID-19 cases. Since the pandemic began, more than 33,000 Hoosiers have been diagnosed with the virus. The Department of Health also reports 37 new deaths from COVID-19. And so far, 1,907 people in Indiana have died from the coronavirus. The IU School of Medicine is launching a statewide study to understand immunity to COVID-19, and they need your help. Researchers want to understand how immunity to COVID-19 can develop and change over time in children and adults who live in Indiana. The goal is to understand the types of immunity people develop to COVID-19 after being sick with the virus. They also want to learn how people who never had symptoms can still develop antibodies or other types of immunity and how long immunity lasts. We want to look at immune responses in both children and adults because understanding how immunity develops in both groups is important to vaccine development. And it's also important in understanding how infection spreads in the community, even in those who don't have symptoms. They are looking for four different groups of people to participate. Those who had symptoms of COVID-19 and tested positive. Those who had symptoms but tested negative or were never tested. People with symptoms but have, people with no symptoms, excuse me, but have not been exposed. And people who do not have symptoms and have not been exposed. You will need to fill out a survey and then give blood samples over time. About four weeks after completing the survey, then again at about four, 
10 and 22 months. Anyone in Indiana can take part, but you do have to come to Indianapolis for the blood work. You will be paid $25 for each blood draw. We have all the details on how you can sign up right now on the RTV6 app. Our Hiring Hoosiers initiative is more committed now than ever before to connect you to career opportunities that are still available as the pandemic continues. We're teaming up with Indiana Black Expo to create the Hiring Hoosiers Employment Opportunity Fair. There will be three virtual career fairs throughout the year. The goal is to help streamline the job search process and keep the community informed about in-demand careers and educational programs. Right now, you know, with small businesses, with, and, you know, individuals with respect to jobs um, and with respect to our educators and our families, um, it's very important that we continue to provide these services in light of COVID-19. The first virtual job fair is scheduled for July 9th. For more information, just go to HiringHosiers.com. It is set to be another nice weekend in central Indiana, and that means people will be hitting the water. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us this morning with boating safety tips from the Fishers Police Department. Kelsey. Well, now that it's warm outside, we are all spending more time outside, whether that's just outside, hanging out at the pool, or even on the lake. And safety officials want to make sure if you're doing any water sports, that you're doing it safely. According to the DNR, there are several violations they see most often out on the lake. The first is boaters not having enough life jackets on board for each person on the boat. Another Indiana law they see broken is if you're doing any water sports, there needs to be someone else on board acting as a spotter besides the driver and most importantly don't drive a boat while intoxicated we just really want people to be safe we would much rather have these conversations now get people to wear their life vest when they're on the water um, get people to operate in a safe manner to not operate if they're intoxicated and during this pandemic they are suggesting that people wear their masks while on the boat but of course not while you're in the water i'm kelsey anderson rtv6 all right, thank you, Kelsey. Uh, it will be a great place to be on the water later on uh, today and also over the course of the weekend with the sunshine. Make sure you do not forget the sunscreen. No, even so, some of these cooler temperatures will start to work in. As far as today's forecast goes and whether or not you can exercise, you got to be a little cautious here this morning. We're going to give you uh, the fair alert here throughout the morning hours. Once we get into the afternoon hours, it's going to become a little better. The reason is we will be dealing with some spotty storms throughout the course of the morning and a few showers as well. But once we get to the afternoon hours and that front is fully through, it is going to turn into a really nice afternoon and evening across the area. So we'll keep thunderstorms around through about 12, 1 o'clock and then better weather with mostly sunny skies working its way in by the time we get to 4 o'clock onward. I will note though, if you are going to be out later this evening and you're going to be on your patio or another one across central Indiana, maybe grabbing dinner once the sun sets, which is until 9 o'clock, it will cool off very, very quickly. We'll talk more about that weekend forecast in just a little bit. Todd, thank you. Another night of violent protests across the country in response to the death of George Floyd. Straight ahead, the response from the Minneapolis mayor overnight. President Trump's war with Twitter is escalating the actions he's taking in response to his tweets being fact-checked. It's 540. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. We'll be right back. This morning, we are following new developments in the case of George Floyd. The U.S. attorney on the case revealing no decision has been made yet on any charges, saying we are conducting a robust and meticulous investigation surrounding the event and the police officer's actions on that evening. The news pr prompting protests in Minneapolis and around the nation. ABC's Inez de la Quatera is in Washington now with the very latest. Overnight, more destructive protests in Minneapolis. Windows smashed, dozens of businesses ransacked and set ablaze, including the police precinct in the neighborhood where George Floyd died while in police custody. This after prosecutors say they're not yet ready to press charges in the case. Video shows Floyd on the ground, handcuffed, then losing consciousness with Officer Derek Chauvin's knee on his neck. Medics say they were unable to find Floyd's pulse on the way to the hospital. Both the Justice Department and FBI now investigating the matter. We are conducting a robust and meticulous investigation into the circumstances 
surrounding the events of May 25th, 2020, and the police officers' actions on that evening. An estimated 4,000 people marching peacefully through Minneapolis earlier, demanding justice. Many of them chanting, I can't breathe, some of the final words uttered by Floyd. Protests spreading to more cities across the country, including New York City, where people arrested at least 40 people. In Los Angeles and in Denver, dozens gathered at the state capitol where shots were reportedly fired and one person was hit by a car. In Minneapolis, Target is now temporarily closing 24 stores in the Twin Cities after protesters were seen looting some of its stores in the area. You have every absolute right to be angry. However, you have no right to perpetrate violence and harm on the very communities that you say that you are standing up for. And President Trump weighed in on Twitter, blaming the city's Democratic leadership for the violence, threatening to call in the National Guard, and adding, quote, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. In Esdal Equitera, ABC News, Washington. And as thank you, as Elon Musk's SpaceX tried to soar to new heights Wednesday, his car company Tesla announced it was bringing car prices back down to earth. The Tesla Model X is now starting at $39,000 after a $2,000 discount. It's the most popular and affordable Tesla model. The electric vehicle and clean energy company is also offering discounts on the Model 3 and the Model S. Tesla is one of the few automakers to see sales increase in the first quarter of the year, as well as profit during the pandemic. American Airlines is reducing management and support staff by 30%. Employees received a memo Wednesday asking for voluntary exits. The memo also said the airline would be running at a smaller capacity going forward because of the loss of business due to the pandemic. If employees don't take advantage of the exit packages and voluntary layoffs may take place. American is also expected to hold discussions with its pilot and flight attendant unions about reducing headcount. It is 547. Todd is standing by now tracking your Friday forecast. Hey, Todd. Uh, good morning, Nicole. I feel like every morning this week so far, I've been starting you off with radar, which is never a good thing. That means there's usually something on it. I don't show it right off the bat uh, when there's nothing on it. But once again, this morning, we're dealing with some showers and a few isolated downpours. However, the rain is not as widespread or as heavy as it was yesterday morning, but still some showers getting going now in Greencastle, a heavier downpour right there on the county line as you work your way uh, into Morgan County. And then as we slide up uh, towards Towards the north and to the northeast, just north of Indianapolis, there's a few isolated downpours uh, making their way into the Lebanon area. Up there towards Noblesville as well, a little bit of a closer look there. That one little shower in uh, Boone County getting ready to cross over 421 there, just south of uh, Kirkland. And then there's one little downpour just to the northwest of Cicero and Morse Reservoir there in northern Hamilton County. But the cold front is still off to our west, so as that front gets a little bit closer, you know, it's a little more in the way of shower activity right along that front in Illinois. And that front is going to sweep all the way across the state from west to east. Finally seeing that change in the weather pattern, more of a normal one from west to east. And that cold front right now is still from Chicago down towards the St. Louis area. So throughout the course of uh, the day today, as that front goes through, there will be showers and a few isolated thunderstorms. Now that front is passing here in central Indiana. Once the sun comes up, as the skies are already starting to brighten and that's going to add a little bit of instability to the atmosphere. So there's just some scattered showers through nine o'clock. I think that front passes through downtown closer to the noon hour, but as it makes its way through eastern Indiana during the peak heating of the day, you notice uh, some brighter reds and some purples here. Those could be some stronger storms uh, with some heavier downpours and some gusty winds that we'll have to keep an eye on. But by four o'clock, most of the rain is off towards the east and from that point forward throughout the course of the evening hours, we should be in pretty good shape uh, for your forecast. Everybody's within a couple degrees of each other this morning in the 60s throughout the day. Today, we'll get the temperatures back up into the mid 70s. The whole pretty steady here while the clouds and the showers are around this morning. But as soon as we get into that sunshine, it will be a lot warmer. But look at the temperatures come tomorrow morning, going all the way down into the 50s. It's going to be running a lot cooler than it has been. There's no doubt about that. And then your weekend forecast, terrific. 
Pacific, 72 tomorrow, low humidity, nothing but sunshine, 70 degrees on Sunday. We'll keep the temperatures in the 70s on Monday before we start to moderate and heat things back up once we get into the middle half of next week. So don't give up on today when you see the rain chances in the forecast. If you pull up an app, it's just here through about midday. Nicole, this evening should be terrific across the area. We have Friday night plans. All right, Todd, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Well, let's take a live look at traffic this morning. This is I-65 at the pedestrian overpass just north of 30th Street. You can see here at 550 traffic is starting to pick up, but no delays to report as you head out the door. President Trump is escalating his war with Twitter, signing an executive order Thursday that quickly stirred controversy. Reed Bidian has the details. My executive order calls for new regulations under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. President Trump signing an executive order targeting social media companies Thursday in an apparent act of retribution for Twitter labeling two of his tweets potentially misleading days earlier. If Twitter were not honorable, if you're going to have a guy like this be your judge and jury, I think you shut it down as far as I'm concerned. Trump's order doesn't mean people would lose their Facebook or Twitter accounts. What it does is reinterpret a critical 1996 law shielding websites and tech companies from lawsuits. They have a shield. They're not going to have that shield. Among other things, Trump's order instructs the DOJ to consult with state attorneys general on allegations of anti-conservative bias. It makes it easier for regulators like the Federal Trade Commission to accuse platforms of suppressing free speech when imposing their own standards. Twitter responded to the executive order, posting in part, quote, the EO is a reactionary and politicized approach to a landmark law. Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi calling Trump's order a distraction. What the president is doing is silly. It's silly. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Reed, thank you. Another major sporting event canceled because of the coronavirus. Coming up after the break, why Boston officials say running the race this year is just not feasible. It's 5.52. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. Welcome back. For the first time in its 124-year history, the Boston Marathon will not be run. Mayor Marty Walsh made the announcement on Thursday. The race that was originally scheduled for April 20th was pushed back to September, but state and local leaders agreed it was not possible for the city and other communities along the route to host the race safely. Instead, the Boston Athletic Association will be holding a virtual race. Participants will be required to complete a continuous marathon within a six-hour time period anytime between September 7th and 14th. Once completed, runners will be sent the official 2020 Boston Marathon program, participant t-shirt, medal, and runner's bib. Well, if you're heading out for a run this morning, Todd, you may have to dodge some rain showers depending on where you're at. Yeah, you know, through the noon hour, there's going to be the chance of rain in this forecast, Nicole. With that said, it's not raining widespread here this morning, so I would suggest just check the radar, and I'll show it to you here in just a second. Uh, before you venture out, here's the view from downtown to the north, and there's definitely more clouds uh, than clear skies across the area. And here is uh, that radar. As I mentioned, we're just now seeing some isolated showers and some downpours starting to flare up across the area. You notice how spotty they are. They're streaming from southwest to northeast. Uh, but they'll increase in coverage here as the morning progresses and we start to continue to bring in uh, the cold front that is just off to our west. So showers and storms in the forecast on a scattered basis through about the noon one o'clock hour. Then this afternoon and this evening we are going to be in great shape. We'll drop the humidity very quickly once the front passes. Temperatures will rebound up into the mid 70s. So it turns into a really, really nice afternoon and evening hours for most of us. And then we're going to carry that over into the weekend as well with mostly sunny skies and high temperatures that'll be topping off in the low 70s. It's the surprise in the box to recognize an effort to keep kids safe in a COVID-19 hotspot. I'm Rafael Sanchez. That story coming up on RTV6.